I'm Emma. It's the transcript. This week, the transcript speaks to culinary arts teacher Miss Pickren about her upcoming retirement. Connor McClendon holds court with the Northampton High boys and girls tennis teams on Hamped Up. And Nell Sanders examines the impact of new federal policies on the environment. The Pentagon reported on Thursday that the U.S. had dropped the largest non-nuclear bomb in the U.S. arsenal on an Islamic State tunnel complex in Afghanistan. It is unclear how many Islamic State militants were killed, or whether there were civilian casualties. Lieutenant Colonel Rick Francona told CNN that, quote, it will feel like a nuclear blast to anyone in the area, and that it would kill people for hundreds of meters. On Wednesday, President Trump publicly contradicted several long-stated policy views, bringing his stances more in line with the Washington orthodoxy. Meeting with the NATO Secretary General, Trump said of the military alliance, quote, I said it was obsolete. It's no longer obsolete, unquote. A week after calling China the world champion of currency manipulation, a common refrain on the campaign trail, he told the Wall Street Journal, quote, they're not currency manipulators, unquote. Trump also shifted positions on the U.S. Export-Import Bank, telling the journal it's actually, quote, a very good thing and it actually makes money, unquote, including for smaller companies. Republican Ron Estes won a congressional special election in Kansas this week to replace new CIA director Mike Pompeo. The seat went to Pompeo by 31 points in November, but pro-choice Sanders Democrat James Thompson managed to hold Republican State Treasurer Ron Estes to seven points, despite the fact that Thompson got almost no help from the National Democratic Party. Hi, I'm Elena Fragamini. For 30 years, Ms. Pickering has taught culinary arts in classrooms across New England. Countless students have learned critical cooking skills through her kind instruction and fun lessons. This year, Miss P will hang up her apron and move into retirement. So what my plans are after I retire from Northampton High School is to still continue with my passion and my love, which is absolutely working with foods. And um, I hope to work with the Western Mass Food Bank of Massachusetts as a nutrition coordinator, um, as well as my other passion and love, which is dog training. Too, but I certainly am going to miss teaching in the classroom, which I've done for the last 30 years. I think my favorite memory was Miss P tried to bake an egg and then it exploded over all our chocolate chip cookies. Every day that I walk into Miss P's class, as soon as she says good morning, we start a million memories just that day. So it'll be kind of me cheating myself if I just chose one. My favorite memory would, would have to be she would always help, um, help me get on tie on my apron and help me figure out, figure out the, right, the right measurement for the recipe that I'll be working on. My favorite part is watching Miss P yell at Bobby every day. Due to budget constraints, the culinary arts position will not be filled after Miss P's retirement this year. So at Northampton High School, I believe there's going to be a big void in the related arts department without having somebody here in the culinary arts or baking and pastry arts program. So um, in the course here we cover a lot of communication skills, life skills, how to work with people in a different situation, different settings. It offers things for students that um, don't necessarily feel very comfortable in an academic setting in the entire hours of the school day. And so I'm not sure there's courses that are going to be offered at Northampton High School that's going to continue in that vein. We love you, Miss P, and thank you for um, everything you've done for us as students and everything you've put into this school. I'd have to second that, and I'd have to say that she has an exceptional talent, which I'm sure she already knows, and that she'll never be able to be replaced. Um, that I would wish her good luck with, with her new career. To have a good retirement. Thanks for everything you do, Miss P. I love this class, it's a really fun class, and just have fun. Make sure to stop by the Culinary Arts Room and thank Miss P for all her work. Hi, uh, I'm Connor McClendon, I uh, ran out of chalk. But welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this?
This week, I talked to NHS senior Jordan Kerr and NHS junior Galen Windsor about playing for the tennis team. Uh, so my first question for you is, what is it like being a part of a team that doesn't have any seniors? Um, it's very interesting. In fact, we only have two juniors this year, as myself and Matt Skrzynski. Um, and compared to last year, we actually had about like half of our team was, was seniors. But I'm, I'm hopeful about it because it means that next year we'll have the same same varsity players. and So we'll be able to build this year. And I'm, I'm hoping for a really good season next year if, if this year isn't really good. Uh, and you also got a new coach this year. So what has that transition been like? Um, it's been really good. Uh, he's he's really he's a, an improvement to be honest, and um, he's he's been really working on our strategy um, and on uh, building team chemistry instead of focusing on individual players, which was kind of our our coach's focus last year. And I think that's a big improvement for this year. This is your senior year, uh, so what are you going to miss most about playing high school tennis? A lot of the people on the team, we've all been on it for four years. We have I think nine seniors this year, so I'll definitely miss that team atmosphere like we all know each other really well we've been playing for a long time so I'll definitely miss that and how do you feel about the team's overall start to the season you guys are three and one now I'm really happy with it I was actually worried because we lost a few key players including our first singles player um, so I don't really know what I was expecting but now we're three and one so I'm really happy with that so high school tennis, there's no referees. It's you making the calls. Is that ever challenging? Occasionally, we play, you know, some uh, s some players with some with bad sportsmanship, and so that does kind of become an issue, especially if it's like a really close match, and you make a you you accidentally make a bad call, and that you know ends up being a deciding factor in who wins. Sometimes it's hard to tell if a shot was in or out, so you just kind of have to call it and be confident with it. And sometimes the other person will ask, like, "Are you sure that was out?" So that can be a little bit difficult. And finally, what are you looking to improve on this season in terms of your own skills? Um, honestly, my mental game is my is my my, my main uh, weakness. Uh, I often, you know, get uh, frustrated in games pretty easily. Um, definitely consistency. I sometimes get too excited if I get an easy shot and then hit it out or into the net. So I want to keep that up. And also, I just. I tend to think too hard about what I'm doing and then mess up from that. So I just need to clear my head and just play. All right, great. Thank you so much for being on Hamped Up. In other sports news, the softball team outscored opponents 25-1 to through their first two games of the season, and the baseball team won their home opener against Longmeadow 10-5. to The boys lacrosse team is battling for the top spot in the Valley League, and junior Abby Baldwin scored her 100th career goal for the girls lacrosse team in the team's 18 to nothing win over Munson last Friday. The girls track team is 2-0 and beat Ludlow on Monday, and the boys track team is 0-1. The girls' ultimate frisbee team crushed the Amherst JV team 15 to 1 on Tuesday. And finally, the boys' ultimate team is 0 and 2, and senior James Berger suffered a serious injury in the team's loss to Four Rivers on Wednesday. Hi, I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. This week I'm looking into the Trump administration's take on climate change and environmental policies. Since the beginning of the 2016 presidential race, Donald Trump has been against the prevention of climate change. He has kept his promise since his election. Since his first day in office, Trump has worked towards dismantling the Obama administration's climate action plan. He has renewed the controversial Keystone XL pipeline project and the much contested Dakota Access pipeline. He has also said that the U.S. will be pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement, which heavily depends on U.S. support to survive. Additionally, Trump is pushing to bring back coal mining to increase jobs. He revoked the Obama administration's stream protection rule, which was a regulation to protect waterways from coal mining waste. This week, President Donald Trump dramatically shifted the United States' approach to climate change and environmental conservation. On Tuesday, Trump signed an executive order that curbs our federal government's enforcement of climate regulations by putting American jobs above addressing climate change. Many individuals are worried about the impact of Trump's policies on the environment and what role the U.S. will play in reducing climate change in the future. I got a chance to talk with Dan Moylan and some NHS students to hear their take on the impact of these policies. 
And I think it's important for every student to learn about environmental science because it's all about how humans impact the environment. And I think it's important to know how your actions and your thoughts uh, and your lifestyle impact the other people around you. You know, we have a great impact on the environment that we live in uh, just based on our American lifestyle. And I think it's important for everyone just to know what the impact is. It's up to, it's up to you after that if you want to decide how to change your lifestyle, but it's important to know that. I think. The Trump administration has um, a pretty clear stance on environmental issues, which is that they're not prioritizing it. Uh, the Trump administration is prioritizing jobs, which has a direct correlation to the environment. But I think that the direct implications for our environment are going to be that we're going to see some short-term spikes in CO2 emissions per person in the United States. And that is mainly going to be due towards um, energy manufacturing. Trump's big thing right now is um, he's saying it's okay to just make electricity and you don't need to worry about how you make it. You don't need to worry about the environmental impact. And so if you want to use coal, you can use coal, uh, even though that is the main contributor to CO2 emissions in the United States. I think there certainly are quite a few major issues facing the environment, but I do think that two of the most important that we need to tackle now are climate change and deforestation. If you deny it, long enough, like it, it's going to become irreversible and it's going to get to the point where uh, all life on the planet is probably going to be non-existent. I think the Trump administration is not doing a good job recognizing the environmental issues. He's not even recognizing the issues at all. He's taken steps to defund parts of NASA that have studied climate change and that is just proving the point that he just doesn't care enough or doesn't care at all or even believe in it. Being educated on our impact on our global environment is tremendously important in this modern day. One way to raise awareness about climate change is to make environmental science a mandatory class in American public schools. Everyone, whether or not you've studied the environment in school, can make eco-friendly changes in their home and local community. You just have to be willing. Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to go to nhstechnology.org for more content. Hey, if you're interested in becoming a peer mentor, especially you sophomores and juniors, pick up an application in the guidance office or the main office. And exciting news, at the end of this half day today, the list for next year's chamber choir and Northamptons will be posted outside the Little Theater, so check those out. To all the faculty and students at Northampton High, have a wonderful spring break. <laughs> Transcript. Mm -hmm.